Think about think about this. You know, I'm from a place where it's 14 percent black. Waterloo is 14 percent black. We have the most black folks in the state of Iowa. So okay. if you want to see blackness, come to Waterloo. Okay. So the the high the highest black population in Iowa is in is in Waterloo. Okay. But I, the I didn't problem know that. the problem with that stat is not that stat, but the problem with Waterloo is 40 percent of the black population is incarcerated. Hmm. 40 percent. Wow. That's almost half. Yeah. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. It's depressing to hear that. So there's a huge issue um, when it comes to segregation, access, when it comes to uh, resources, when it comes to economics, when it comes to home ownership, when it comes to everything, we're last on the totem pole. They just they put out an article in uh, USA Today about Waterloo, and they said that Waterloo was the number one worst place for the black person to live in all of America. Wow. In little old Waterloo, Iowa, huh. the place that I was born from. And that's depressing. Yeah. That's really sad. I don't know what the answer is. I do know what the answer is. We need more stories like mine. We need more. We It can't just be me. We need like 50,000 of these, the 40% that's incarcerated. We need their story. Yep. And when they need resources, they need support. Damn, that's crazy. Right here. These are the 15 worst cities. So uh, for those of you that are listening, we can't show it on YouTube because they may pull us, but we have an article called The 15 Worst Cities for Black Americans. It's from USA Today. We're Keep scrolling going. down. Trenton, New Jersey, Springfield, Illinois, Fresno, California. Minnesota, Kankakee, number Illinois. four. Decatur. There's a lot of Illinois on there. There's, there's another Illinois. Look. Look, Minnesota. Racine, Wisconsin, number three, and Milwaukee, number two. Number one, Waterloo, Cedar Falls, Iowa. I have an uncle who lives in Waterloo who's an attorney up there. Uh, I, uh, I, I would have definitely paid attention if this would have. What's the date on this article? This is 2017. So this is, yeah, fairly recently. What, one of the things that struck me when I first moved to this area seven years ago um, Cause you know I uh, I grew up in Des Moines, but um, I was a so you were a, an artist with drawing and so forth. I was a professional actor and singer, and I was I lived in New York and I was all over the world uh, mm. doing that kind of stuff. And then I went to graduate school in New Jersey and went to was in the military. Went to medical school in North Carolina. Anyway, I moved here, and the evening news it was always someone shot in Waterloo, someone stabbed in Waterloo, and it got to the point where. My wife and I started to almost joke about it. Like when the news was coming on, it was like, "Can we? Can we? Uh, is, is Waterloo going to be in the in the news tonight?" And it, of course, like I said, I've got an uncle that lives up there, and it's sort of like, "Wow, I'd love to hear a positive story about Waterloo every now and then." But you know, like the thing about it is, like, outside of all that violence and all that stuff you hear, man, that's one of the most beautiful places you've ever been. Like I'm talking about, as people. Like the people that's live that live on the Waterloo East Side is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, they got that just they just have that southern draw. We all from Mississippi, pretty much. You know, most of the people from Waterloo, black that are they're from like the South. We mm -hmm. migrated um, up here to work on the railroad back okay. in the day, um, and so they still wave. You know, you still get the folks waving at you. They only got to know your name. They still mm -hmm. wave. That's a that's a nice that's a that tell you that this is a nice time. That's a, a nice gesture. You know, that's... I agree. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. So you still get that in the town, and that's that's important. That's super important. And I'm glad I'm from Waterloo. I'm, I'm happy to be somebody where it looks like the... It's like we the underdogs. You know, we're the underdogs. And um, if I can do anything to help with that, like if I can use my story and if I can constantly keep saying that I'm from Waterloo, maybe that'll help, under, help some of the young people and some of the folks that give Waterloo kind of that bad rap a different perspective, like when you know you hear about the Andre Rice that's coming from out of there too, right. or the, even Jason Souls because he went to high school there too. So you know, I think that's important just to be able to to lift that that town up and lift up the folks that live there because I still got a, a number of friends that live there, you know. Yeah. And um, I want to make sure that they 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 become success, successful too in whatever they passions and whatever they want to do. You know, matter of fact, two of my friends that I went to college with, they from Waterloo, cousins, and you know my roommate was from Waterloo. Like we all live, we all left as a pact. 
I was the last person to stay though, you know, like after all they graduated and went on with their lives and stuff, but I was left. I was it was just me, um, my brother and then uh my roommate. We was the last people left and um you know, that's probably why I really started to to really dive in on my art like I did. I was already good, but I was like, man, what am I gonna do as a career? 